cure and humane conditions. Is this very important arm of national security achieving its mandate? This Sunday on Eye on Dependency, Goff and Natasha welcome acting Deputy Commissioners Ramata and Bruce to bring you up to speed on rehabilitation efforts behind prison walls and the technology being used to advance the restoration of prisoners who are able to reintegrate into society. You don't want to miss Eye on Dependency this Sunday from 10 a.m. Listen live on I-95.5 FM or watch live on the I on Dependency Facebook page or YouTube channel. I on Dependency. We don't just share stories. We change lives. We change lives. I on Dependency with Garth and Natasha. Reality Radio at its best, where every life is a biography. Sundays at 10 a.m. and exclusively on i95.5 FM. And streamed live on the Eye on Dependency Facebook page and YouTube channel. Service as an arm of the criminal justice system is committed to the protection of society and crime prevention by facilitating opportunities for rehabilitation, habitation, habilitation for offenders while maintaining control under safe and secure humane conditions. Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago, and welcome to our dependency. Right here on I-95.5 FM, live on the Independence Facebook page and YouTube channel. Good morning, Natasha. Good morning, Garth. Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. It's so... I can't get over this. Good morning, you know. I'm so happy to be here on a Sunday morning with you. And we have a jam-packed show. We, we are touching on a topic that has been near and dear to us, the prison system, prison service. And we are delighted to talk about rehabilitation efforts within the prison service with two deputy commissioners of prison. And we're going to hear from them because we've heard from prisoners themselves. We've heard from um, relatives of prisoners about the conditions in there and the access that they have to rehabilitative programs because that is the objective of a prison. Um, that is the punishment for committing a crime. You are sent to prison for a certain number number of years or months or whatever it is. And when you leave those prison walls, you're supposed to be a changed person. So that is incumbent then on the prison service to provide those programs that will change people's lives, that will give them opportunities to learn new skills, to develop themselves and to return to society as reformed citizens. Yes, and um, we have via video call Mr. Sh Acting Commissioner Sherwin Bruce, and we're still trying to link up with Mr. Ramuta via telephone. And um, we hope he'll be successful in doing so because these gentlemen have been members of the Trinidad and Tobago Prison Service for quite a while. Um, I, could, I, must, I could tell you for sure, Mr. Bruce, when I started my journey, I first met Mr. Bruce at a workshop for the National Drug Council. And this, has, this was at least 25 years ago. And he was just an ordinary prison officer then. <laughs> and he worked his way up to this position where he's sitting this morning and I would like to congratulate him publicly um, 
there are two people who I always rec um, recognized, recognized in these positions, is Mr. Bruce and Joan Archie, who, you know, this is not an easy feat, folks, and um, they are good example. They are good examples for both men and women serving the colors of staying the course and you know elevating themselves to number two on the list number three on the list top five on the list this is excellent and so mr bruce welcome good morning and good, 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 good morning god good, good morning miss Nunez. good morning to the Tobago. on behalf of the commissioner of prisons i like to say thanks very much for this opportunity on behalf of the commissioner the executive law members of the service and also the eight mates. Um, God, just a note, I'm still an ordinary person, God. Um, <laughs> when you when you met me, I, I was a member of the prison welfare department. Um, we were going gun ho with how we we have looked at what are some of the needs of the eight mates, hence the training at national security with the drug program. I like to tell you congratulations also because I remember you were working on the logic model for for the iron dependency. And I have seen iron dependency grow through the years. So God and Miss Nunes, congratulations to you both also. I'm sure you 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 you've had many um voices saying that you have touched a life. So continue the good work that you do. Next now. Continue making it happen. Um, Mr. Bruce, I want to thank you very much. And I admire your modesty. But again, I am not going to let you get away with accepting these accolades here. I am very serious about, you know, people who hold on to their career, especially in the protective service. People take this for granted because, you know, the saying, who in the kitchen feels the heat. And... For you, with all the negatives that we hear about different arms of the protective service, when we could, when we could give kudos to those who made it, we have to. And I don't want to wait till you know I hear Mr. Bruce was and then I say, "Boy, you was a good man." Mm, mind doing that. This is the time. So sit back, enjoy it, soak it in. You have done well. Thank you, you Mr. Sinclair. You have done well. You have done well. My family and the service. I, I, I take this. Uh, right. It doesn't happen alone as an officer. Um, theory tells us that the, children, that the prison service, correctional service, is one of the most stressful jobs anybody could have. So with all the support of your family and staff, this this cannot be. So I share that with them. So thank yes. very much, Mr. Sinclair. And with the same, Mr. Ramuta, good morning. Well, that we had outgrown... At Mr. Ramuta? Yes, Mr. Ramuta is here with us too. Mr. Bruce, Mr. Ramuta, good morning to you. Hi, good morning, God. Good morning, Natasha. Good morning, Mr. Bruce. Good morning, good Ms. Morning. Alexander. Right. Uh, let me apologize for my late attendance. It's um, yeah, technology. Um, we call it absent. But um, okay. you're here. <laughs> <laughs> you're here, and thank, thank God for that, folks. Um, so we're going to have, we have a nice lineup of stuff to show you here this morning. And again, to our radio listeners, we'll try to describe it to you. Um, if you're interested in taking this journey with us on the prison service this morning, log on to Annie Penance's Facebook page or YouTube channel if you don't have access to Facebook. Because we want to take you on a journey, a positive journey of the work of the Trinidad and Tobago Prison Service here this morning. And I think we also have the comes person who will be on Facebook. And for any questions you all need to, answer, to ask, to have answered, there comes the department will take care of that. Mr. Ramuta, um, Hi. Yes. again, to, with, with, let, let's talk about years of service. How many years of service do you have under your belt? Well, I'm just close to the three years of service. How, how many, I, sir? 33, 33. 33. Yes. You have a radio yes. on in the background? Yes, I'm listening to you, so I'll have to slow down the volume. Um, if it's possible, you, you, because we're getting a, a feedback or, or answer back, an echo. So if you have a headset you can use on your device, that would help. 
So while Mr. Amuta sorts that out, he's... Yeah. We okay there now? 33 years service, that's a little better. Yes. Mr. Bruce, your years of service to the Trinidad and Tobago Prison Service? Um, the same amount as Mr. Amuta. Actually, we came in the service at the same time. As okay. that, you will know we are batch. Okay, yes. Right, so... Wow, and that's even better. Two members of the same batch holding top position in the in in serving the colors. That's that's even wonderful. I think um, it's a lot more than that. It's about seven, eight of us. So okay. We go and this was a special batch. Batch. It's always better. So we're happy to be a team going forward, carrying the service in the direction we know that it should be going based on our years of experience and right. training. Lovely, lovely. So folks, this morning, what we plan to do again, we are going to take you through the paces here and show you the photos and in some cases, two minute videos of the, the programs and rehabilitation department, the agricultural program, the livestock, I mean, you name it, the prison service, they have been doing it and it's time you all see because, as I said, for the past how many years, we continue to talk about the negative side of the prison service. Of course, they're not a perfect unit, as you know. Um, no institution is. But yeah, then you will hear about the guys who, the officers who choose to get themselves caught up in all kind of wrongdoing. Um, but with the little resources that they have, and as you know, the, and if I could use this word, the archaic system that they still operate under they still trying the prison service still trying their best to make ends meet and make do with what they have and we have to admire that so we're going to show you that this morning tasha yes um we you want to take a break and then come back yes yeah, so let's take a quick break and we'll come back um and start by showing you the prison facilities that exist and talk a little bit about the clients as as I understand they're now referred to um, the clients and the services I guess we'll go into that later the services that are offered to them yes and I know there were some people who were up in arms of that word client mm -hmm. so we'll ask Mr. Bruce and Mr. Amuta to, to again you know speak about that and why that change in in language and we know why but for the uninitiated we want them to understand what prompted the prison service to and and i think the first person i heard saying that was mr wilson so folks we're going to a quick break and when we return we will be speaking with mr bruce and mr ramuta acting commissioners of prison we'll be back this Sunday from 10 a.m. on episode 4 of I on Dependency, Reality Radio at its best. The mission of the Trinidad and Tobago Prison Service as a key element of the criminal justice system is to protect citizens by offering rehabilitation for offenders in safe, secure, and humane conditions. Is this very important arm of national security achieving its mandate? This Sunday on Eye on Dependency, Goff and Natasha welcome acting Deputy Commissioners Ramuta and Bruce to bring you up to speed on rehabilitation efforts behind prison walls and the technology being used to advance the restoration of prisoners who are able to reintegrate into society. You don't want to miss Eye on Dependency this Sunday from 10 a.m. Listen live on I-95.5 FM or watch live on the Eye on Dependency Facebook page or YouTube channel. Eye on Dependency. We don't just share stories. We change lives. We change lives. Ah boy. I feel like I'm gonna buy myself a senorita tonight. Nah nah nah. You know you might be promoting slavery. Slavery? Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? Hey, modern day slavery or human trafficking is just what some of these people just do. You know some of these women were tricked to come here? 
Some are held against their will, abused, and even beaten. Most times, the girls don't even see any of the money that is paid for them. And every night, they just have to come out looking nice and sexy for somebody like you. Human trafficking is a serious problem and a serious crime. Persons who solicit commercial sex services may be contributing to human trafficking. A message from the Counter Trafficking Unit of the Ministry of National Security. Eh, Capi, talk to you now, boy. I got a small work for you to do. You make a quick 10 Gs. What are you going to do for me? 10 Gs? What is that you want to do there, boy? What are you doing? Taking your boat, going up the islands, pick up some people and then bring them back here for me. That's all you have to do. Hmm. That's why I like human trafficking, boy. Why is that serious, guy? I can't make that. Trafficking in human beings is a serious violation of a person's human rights. It violates a person's right to freedom of movement, freedom of choice, freedom of speech, and freedom of identity. It is a heinous crime which affects local, regional, and international peace and security. A victim of human trafficking is subjected to many types of abuse. The crime destroys a person's dignity and self-worth. Victims often feel hopeless, are suicidal, and are stigmatized in their communities. Child victims are deprived of their rights to education, play, and social interactions. They are essentially robbed of their childhood and that can never be regained once those years have passed. If we do little or nothing to fight against human trafficking in our country, we can face economic sanctions from international agencies and partners. Our country will be losing money. Doing little or nothing to fight against human trafficking will tarnish our country's international image and most of all, the value we place on human life. Human trafficking is no respecter of persons. Anyone can be a victim. So let us all strive to safeguard human life and dignity in Trinidad and Tobago. We are the Counter Trafficking Unit of the Ministry of National Security, Trinidad and Tobago, safeguarding human life. Thank you for staying with us. This is Ion Dependency and we are live on I-95.5 FM on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you for staying with us. We have via video uh, Deputy Commissioner Bruce and on the phone Deputy Commissioner Mr. Ramuta. Ramuta. Now, um, I'd like to say good morning to the Commissioner of Prisons, Mr. Polchan, Dennis Polchan, and thank you very much for kindly consenting to have your officers sit with us here this morning. The Trinidad and Tobago Prison Service, a division of the Ministry of National Security, is committed to the protection of society and crime prevention by facilitating opportunities for rehabilitation for offenders while maintaining control under safe, secure, and humane conditions. Now, we had a former prisoner on last week, a former client, and he gave his take. And, of course, with the consent of the minister, we going to do another program with them but this morning we have Mr. Bruce and Mr. Ramuta here. Now gentlemen we like to show the public the 11 facilities 11 facilities under the management of the Trinidad and Tobago Prison Service and the various target groups to whom these programs and, and institutions are offered. Now um, Mr. Hinkson when you get an opportunity let's put up the first photo so that those on Facebook and YouTube can see it and so, gentlemen, we're looking at here Eastern, Eastern Correctional. Correctional and Rehabilitation Center and Carrera Convict Prison. Right, Mr. Bruce is there, Mr. Ramuta is there, right? Yes, 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 yes I'm here, sir. Okay, great. All right, so we are taking you through these. For those of you who've never seen these facilities before, um, we're going to this Carrera Island Prison and ECRC. Next photo would be right, and this is we're looking at now the entrance to the Golden Grove Prison and right. the Claxton Bay Correctional Facility, the Golden Grove Prison Complex. Claxton Bay Correctional Facility. Now, this one is relatively new. 
this is a new um setup here yes it is um due due to the covid situation and the need for for um quarantining and separation of covid positive individuals the Capson Bay Correctional Facility was open in October, in October 2020. Um, if you would have, those who are seeing online, they would have seen the ECRC, the Eastern Correctional Rehabilitation Facility. That facility has now become our intake, intake station. Due to our COVID protocols, this intake has been what has kept us as a service where we have at present four COVID positive persons out of a total prison population of 3,800. So due, in spite of the lack of social distancing, they have a COVID positive total of, of only four at this time tells tells you how our protocols are working and that team led by the commissioner the director of medical prison supervisor mr lopez our covid command officer mr alexander and that whole team at the covid command center they are doing an awesome job well to to prison covid safe that's 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 really um that's that's, that's commendable, uh, especially as I said, take into consideration uh, everything. I would else, like. Um, I would like to add to. Sure, Mr. Sure. Uh, the the issue of the commissioner and his fleet. Mr. Amuta, you um you're going in and out, yeah. So careful. Let's let's because we want to hear every word that you have to say. So to start again, please. In supporting our in dealing with COVID. So the Ministry of Health. Yeah, no, the Ministry of National Security. Okay, yeah, because you're North breaking up, so I, I didn't know which ministry you're referring to. Yeah, but both ministries got both ministries. Right, National Security and Ministry of Health, right? Yes, yes. Health, right. Health, 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 health tremendously. Yes, yes. You're sounding better there. Stay right there where you are. Okay. If he's on one foot, you're standing right now. Please stay right <laughs> there. Yeah, I'll, I'll do the ostrich. <laughs> right. And um, Mr. Bruce, the, the one at Claxton Bay, it, the building looks familiar though. Is that... Um, A repurposed facility. That was Vision and Mission at one time? Or what Vision and Mission had put up? Yes. Yes, okay. it is. It is... Um, Yes, it is. It, it has been repurposed, as as Mahina sort of said. We did some some repurposing of the building, some construction. We made right. some change to the security. We also um we also ensure that it's safe because remember it's in a community. Yes. So we must ensure that who whomever we send into that location would be manageable. So right. besides that separation. Hmm. We also take the community in the, into consideration. Of course. Can you say, Mr. Bruce, how many people are housed there at the moment? At the moment, we should have those four positive persons there, okay. and also we should have we should have some more of their cohort at the same time there, because okay. right. we place persons down there as cohorts. Okay. When when it comes positive to ensure that um, the separation doesn't transfer from person to person. All right. So the next slide, Mr. Hinkson, would be uh, and folks, if you just joined us, you're listening to our independency, and we are speaking with Mr. Bruce and Ramuta, acting commissioners of prisons, and they are taking us through the various locations, eleven in all, and we are showing it. Um, as I said, we described it for our listeners. So now this is what we see near the entrance to Port of Spain Prison. One of the oldest, would I, should I say? Pardon me, sir? One of the oldest institutions in Trinidad and Tobago under the prison service? Yes, it is. One of the oldest. Um, when, when you look at the history and you're reading through the history of the prison service, you would see that the Port of Spain Prison was, was constructed on the outskirts of Quarter Spain. 
right? we hear the out good outskirts. Mm -hmm. And now we laugh because Port of Spain prison is in the heart of, of Port of Spain, the capital of Trinidad and Tobago. Yep. So the city has grown it around it. The development happens and over time, where the prison is now. At that time, when it was constructed, it was on the outskirts. If you look through the history books, yes. The city was constructed on the outskirts of, of Port of Spain. Okay, okay. Uh, got, got a little housekeeping. Yes. Um, we are acting, both of us are acting deputy commissioner of prison and not acting commissioner of prison. Okay. Because we don't want to go back there and get some blows. <laughs> uh, so we are acting deputy, deputy commissioner of prison. Well, thank, thank you for that. Hint, we promoted hint. you in, yes. in, in a... <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for the correction, Mr. Uh, yes, hint, hint. And um, so, Mr. Hinkson, let's go on to the other... Uh, slide um, prison training. Just a note that, please. Yes. Okay, forget me. Sure, go um, ahead. The training college and that team that led by the superintendent there, Mr. Dion Emanuel, we have passed out on the 14th of February. And on the 15th of February, thanks, my composition. The 15th of February, I'd like to thank that team for the wonderful work that they are doing and continue to do with the induction training and the constant training and bringing new blood. As you heard at the beginning, it's 33 years plus we have. Yes. So this new blood, we have great hope for them and knowing that they will continue to carry the service forward in the direction it should go into the face of correction and continue with our, all our rehabilitative efforts. Hinkson, let's see the picture of the um, training college, please. Uh, oh, yeah. Yes, there. And I might delay it here. So, um, right. Mr. Amutai, you wanted to add to that? Yeah, as Mr. Amutai said, passing out for the listenership who, does not, who do not know what passing out means in this context is that it's at the end of their training session. There's a, there's a big parade, a drill parade, and all that. Of course, this time will be all the COVID protocols in place. But it's a drill parade where they demonstrate skills, what they have learned, a little, a little snapshot to show that we are ready to go and ready for induction. Right. And then we have picture of the Youth Training and Rehabilitation Center. And the women's prison. And the women's prison now. And we understand that the YTRC now uh, accommodates girls. We have a separate facility for the, for the females. Okay. For the girls. Which that facility is located in the Golden Grove Prison Complex, also. Okay. It's it's next. It's within proximity to the women's prison. Mm. That that facility is also on the screen. Right. So what we're looking at here now is the women's prison, and the YTRC, the Youth Training and Rehabilitation Center, which was formerly, as we let people know, was formerly YTC, YTC. Youth Training YTC. Center. Yes. Right. So the mere fact that you all have changed that means that there's an emphasis now on rehabilitation of these youngsters. There has always been an emphasis, but it's in the language. In As the language. our language changed from prison to correction, it tells you where we are going forward. And some words now we can't say, but remember, we had the words handicap and we had the other words coming forward. So we, we moved to differently abled, and we keep on going forward. It, it tells me me thinking, what is the major scope of the organization? Mr. Ramota, anything to add to that? Um, um, no, 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 Mr. Bruce has spot on with that. Okay. Um, and the final slide here is, is we're looking at remand prison at, at Golden Grove and the Tobago convict prison um do we have any good news as regards tobago because i know that is a, a particular concern to the citizens on that island yes any update for us on a new facility yet gentlemen um i think that's actually on my scope <laughs> but okay. i would i would like to say congratulations to the guys across the guys the officers across at tobago convict prison i had a conversation with the supervisor with some of the work that they are doing with the rabbits and all the work um, and all the and all your systems they've been getting from the THA and also the probation department on that side. We're about to start another program called the Prisoner Support Program that's in conjunction with the Probation Services Unit. The the whole of Trinidad and Tobago, the whole of the public service approach. If we want something, we all have to work towards it. 
Indeed. Before you before we go on, though, um, could you... Can I, uh, can I add here? Yeah? Sure, sure, Mr. Armstrong. Right. To put it in a nutshell, what Mr. Bruce is saying is that we we'll have reduced the numbers there and we're focusing on quality service as regards to quantity. So until the, the institution can expand or be relocated, we're looking at those programs Mr. Bruce would have mentioned to give us a quality service. All right. And finally... Yes, we have to... Um, not exceeding. Me... Mr. Bruce? Uh, we have reduced the numbers, not exceeding 30, 30 inmates at, at that facility at any time. Okay. 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 Now, gentlemen. It's 21. Just to, let, to finally point um, to remand where, I mean, everyone knows that there have been many, many issues. There are a lot of issues with remanded prisoners. Um and, and a lot of it is beyond the control of the prison service, of course, because we depend on the um, the, ju the justice system to the judiciary as to, to turn over matters in that regard. And how does the work of the rehabilitation programs and rehabilitation department impact on prisoners who are on remand, if at all? Oh, all right, let me jump in here. And um, I need to, to put on the table a different perspective. Or let me, sorry, a fine-tune the perspective. Earlier on, Natasha, you, you made a statement that prisoners are supposed to leave the prison, a changed person. Yes. Right? Um, let me, let me fine-tune that. Prisoners' mandate really is not to change people. It isn't that easy. If people could have been changed, they wouldn't have been in prison. But there are so many other stakeholders out there attempting to do that before they, had, before they come into our fold. What prisons do, or what we're supposed to do, is provide opportunities for change. And, okay, encourage, and encourage our, 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 our inmates. That and I'll explain that to you and encourage our inmates to participate and remove the denial within them and say, I need help. It's just like drug addiction. I need help, and this program can help me, and then we move forward. So, Mr. Ramita, so, so gentlemen, um, so the, the, what does the term rehabilitation mean as it relates to you all? Is this what you're speaking to here? Yeah, yes, yes, right. yes. Right, yes, go so ahead. I, so, it, I, it was important to put this perspective here. So in providing the opportunities, a person has reality they are in life. So mm -hmm. remanded inmates are considered innocent until proven guilty. Yeah. Now it's ticklish for the remanded inmate to agree to guilt, but yet he's facing the court. Or agree to, I need rehabilitation, and you're still facing the court. Because you may be telling the court, I am innocent, or perhaps I, I want a chance to explain what was transpired. But yet still engaging in a program that designed to change your criminal behavior. I need to put that out there, and person needs to put that on the table when they look at prisons, um, what we are mandated to do and what we can do. But in a nutshell, I want to say we can supposed to provide the opportunities for change. Persons who are willing, that is reminded in this, who are willing to accept the fact right. that you can benefit from these programs is welcome. And we try as much as possible to encourage participation. All right. but so but when were these <clears throat> um, programs at any time you are discussing mandatory that the, the, the client would not have a choice but to get involved in some form of program inside there? That's why I said I'm like, and client, when you come into prison yesterday with a warrant, you do not become a client automatically. Right. Your willingness to engage in rehabilitative program and through monitoring and evaluation, you can then become a client. There are some system who are resistant to change. Hmm. 
Uh, Mr. Mr. Ramuta, um, yes. just let me uh, interrupt a minute. Where you are, is it possibility of a landline or something? Because a landline, because we're still having issues with you going in and out. And I know what you have to say is very important. We don't want the listeners to lose what yeah, you say. No, the, the landline is down. Okay. So, um, again, you, you, you need to shift a little bit so yeah. that we can hear you properly because... Um, you know, I want people listening to understand clearly, um, you know, some of the things that we hear and hearing it from you all here this morning will be very important. So, yes, sure. and at, so, and, and when, well, we'll ask that going forward because it, there's, there's, we heard Mr. Pulchan speak about correctional and corrections. Yes. Yes. And, you know, it's a term that we have been using for quite a while. Right. So let me just wrong off, wrong off this point here, right? Yes. When we have a function, a graduation of a particular program, and stakeholders and we celebrate the end of the program, all those persons, yes, they are clients. Okay. Understood. The program, and accept and, and, and they display success in the program. So they are classed there. There are some inmates who are not clients as yet. We have more. Yeah, this, this is, connection um, is yeah, really this, this, this connection is really shaky. bad, Mr. Ramuta. Um, nah. Mr. Bruce, I think you might have a feeling at some point here. Let's go to this two-minute video, video of Programs and Rehabilitation Department, presented by the Programs and Rehabilitation Department. And um, also, um, who we have online from your comms department, Mr. Boos, is, is it Mr. Alexander? Yes, we have right. Mr. Alexander. He's our com. Our morning com to you. Online. Morning to you, Mr. Alexander. Thank you very much for your time this morning. All right, so let's go to that two minute video programs and rehabilitation department. Hinkson, over to you. If you're just joining us, you're listening to Annie Pendency, and we are speaking with. Yes, we are speaking with Mr. Bruce and Mr. Ramuta. And let me get it right Acting Deputy Commissioner of Prison. Yes. And Welcome to episode four of our Did You Know series. Let's go to the video. Welcome to episode four of our Did You Know series. In this episode, we feature the Programs and Industry Department. This particular department is the largest department within the prison service, and it plays a critical role in the rehabilitative process. It is headed by a Deputy Commissioner of Prisons and is staffed with over 100 dedicated officers who go beyond the call of duty on a daily basis. My name is Shilindu. I'm presently Assistant Commissioner, Programs and Industry. The Program and Industry facilitates the creation of opportunities for inmates who we refer to as our clients to engage in programs that would allow them when they would have left the institution not to return. The program and industry department has the industry component. The industry component is where we develop scalable skills within our clients whilst they have the opportunity to practice here and on discharge as part of their reintegration and their resettlement, they would have engaged in those programs as a way of earning. They would now have the opportunity to engage in restitution and also as a nest egg for their discharge. These syllabus skills program allows them to set up their own business. The main aim of the Trinidad and Tobago Prison Service is public safety. The Program and Industry Department work alongside all officers on the station, all the operational officers, to ensure that all the programs that happen are tailor-made for the needs of the inmates. Academics, vocational, skilled labor, religion, and even sporting disciplines. These are just some of the initiatives of the Programs and Industry Department. They are all designed to cater to the individual needs of our clients and to prepare them for re-entry into society.
Right. All right. So that was a snapshot of the programs and industry department of the TTPS. It was a snapshot. Pre COVID. <laughs> Remember that? That's pre COVID. Pre COVID, yes. yes. And you so, how. How then are these programs developed? What what determines what kind of programs are offered to the clients at the prison? The Trinidad and Tobago Prison Service has an assessment tool known as the LSCMI, Level of Service Case Management Inventory. It's a tool with eight criminogenic needs. We look at the person's risk. Some persons, because of their risk, they can be involved in external programs or they may escape. So they are not they are not channeled there or they are kept within the confines of the prison before being allowed externally to become involved in certain programs or we may have issues with escapes. You look at their risk, you look at their needs. What are, what, what are their needs? What have they fallen short with? What are, what are the things that would have led them to to be treating the action? And we look at the responsivity. That is their, their specific personality types. When all this has been assessed, we will have numbers piled up in different directions. But we know it's use of syllabus skills, academic, family, leisure, recreation, the, the criminal personality and the association with French criminal associates are some of the main issues that are involved. So programs are developed based on that. We also have a um, special needs program. Sexual offenders, we know that's a special need. We also have the aging population. Mm -hmm. And of course, I know this is God's pet peeve. We try Drug as much offenders. <laughs> I didn't hear that too good. <laughs> the drug offenders, yes, ma'am. Yes. That's, that's, and we, I must say, um, Reboot House has been, since in the beginning they have been there, we've had New Life Ministries, we've had different modules, Vision on Mission modules, we had our intake, we even used our Rise, Rise Maximum radio. We have the hidden inmates seeking empowerment, rise our internal radio. I know that, that that's also something dear to your heart. Yes, it yes, is. Yes, it is, of course. Yes, and we have used it to conduct rehabilitative programs because sensitization, it may not be a program, but sensitization is important in having persons become interested, especially remanded persons. Even the convicted, because as you would have, as you would know, and you have said before, we cannot force anyone into programs. A no. man changes against, against his will. You have the same opinion still. Thank um, you very much. Um, Hinkson put up the International Literacy Day. Before we go on to our next question, Mr. Bruce and Mr. Ramuta, we had an internet. You all had an International Literacy Day participation. Tell us about that, because again, we know some uh, a lot of men who and women who come into prison they some of them are semi-literate or even you know illiterate illiterate tell us about this the international literacy day gentlemen you there yes we are we are here Mr. yes so, so that's the photo we have up now international literacy day you all had some men and women take um take part in this Yes, that was at Port of Spain prison, sir. Right. We have realized, as was said on a previous program, that literacy, the academic part, is, is a concern for a lot of the inmates within our space. And we have always looked at what happens, not only locally, but also on the international scale not only in this jurisdiction but also other correctional jurisdiction and we try to partner and move along we've had some local persons who would have partnered with us hence the library at the port of spain prison and we continue to ensure that 
that we can that we operate how things should be. Of course, as I was alluded before, the straight answer bigger prison service is not perfect. And if we are to fool ourselves and sit on our laurels and feel that perfection is here, then we always stop growing. So we always strive and continue to grow. Okay. That's only through the directive and policy designed by the commission and the executive, but also the input of the officers and also the inmates who are in, a, in our space. If you're just joining us, you're listening to I Independency right here on I95.5 FM, live on the I Independency Facebook page and YouTube channel. We have lots more to show you folks. We have the agriculture program, then there's a go room at Women Prison, the uh, photos of the debate competition, art program. And boy, do we have some artists in, in, in our nation's prison. Um, it's, it's, it's really amazing, um, the kind of work that they've done. We, we showed a clip of time here of 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 guys doing constructions with 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 cardboard you know cardboard boxes and they transfer that and, the the and the soap, and the soap. Yes, yes, yes and the soap art i mean it it was absolutely amazing there are, there are a lot of talented people find their way behind prison walls is amazing uh, but that, yes sir just let me just interrupt you a bit i'm sorry but um persons in prison may not be able to sit in a classroom and do all your maths and all your English, but talk about wisdom and innovativeness. Yes. That you have. Um, so, we have been trained to look at excellence as a, from an academic perspective. But when you become a prison officer, you understand that excellence doesn't always lie in a classroom. A guy could, I was at MSP last week. And this guy could tell you everything about fish, the koi fish. There mm -hmm. he is on, on, on planting, on, on planting the plant, banana planting, and how it's done. And they have the estate and they're going and the guy sitting down and listening. And training happens intentionally, intent, with intention and vicariously. So why some person may say we have a classroom? Yes, we have a classroom and we have the structure. But learning also happens by the office, through the officer, how he cares about himself. What does he do? Does he believe in that correctional direction? Hmm. As we move towards correction, not only in words, but in legislation and action. Our, our action. Yes. And um, folks, this, that, that's a very important point. And, and talk about innovator. I remember Mr. Wilson giving us a joke at time. He said they were doing some searches and they found a guy bubbling a pot in a microwave that they made. <laughs> that they made a microwave. Yes, a microwave, <laughs> sir. A cardboard foil. Yes. It, it was. Cardboard foil and uh, a fire. Mm hmm. Yeah, it, it, it was uh, ingenious, I, I, I must say. But um, you want to ask the touch it? Well. I thought we were gonna go to a break. Yeah, so let's let's take this quick. We, we have Mr. Ramuta back with us. Yes, I'm here. Oh yes, yes. I'm sounding much better. Much better, sir. Much yes. better, sir. Much better. Sir? Thank you. Vit vitamins. vitamins. Stay, stay, <laughs> stay right there, folks. <laughs> we'll be back with lots more. We have lots more to show you. We are speaking with Mr. Uh, Diopasad um, Ramuta and Mr. Shuin Bruce, acting deputy commissioners of prisons. We'll be back. Slavery, a terrible time in our history. The kidnapping, buying and selling of people for profit, the exploitation of another human being. It still exists today. It has a new name, human trafficking. Anyone can be a victim. There is forced labor, sexual exploitation and domestic servitude. Human trafficking is a worldwide problem and an emerging concern for us here in Trinidad and Tobago. If you know of or suspect human trafficking activity, call the counter-trafficking hotline at 800-4CTU or 800-4288. Human trafficking is a crime. Identify it, report it, stop it. A message from the counter-trafficking unit of the Ministry of National Security. We 
Yeah. It is sex trafficking thing that's serious thing in a way. Sex trafficking? Mm-hmm. Mm. I thought it was only human trafficking it have. But what do you mean? No serious thing, boy. Where you get that from? I don't know about human trafficking, you're about sex trafficking. So how can you spot and identify perpetrators and children who are victims of trafficking? Many victims who are children do not look like under 18 years old. Child victims often move escorted around alone or in small groups. They also live in shared and even packed rooms and have very little clothing and belongings. Child victims are often seen with adults who are not their parents, their relatives or their caregivers. Migrant children are often unaccompanied and separated from their parents. Child victims are often engaged in work that is not suitable for children. They are often deprived of their freedom to go to school, to play and to enjoy being a child. Perpetrators have unexplained sources of income and possessions. They are businessmen and businesswomen running legitimate and illegitimate businesses. Perpetrators may appear to be the victim's friend, boyfriend, close relative, or employer. We are the counter-trafficking unit of the Ministry of National Security, Trinidad and Tobago, safeguarding human life. Thank you for staying with us. This is Ion Dependency, and we are speaking with Deputy Commissioners of Prisons Bruce and Ramuta about the rehabilitation programs that are offered within the Trinidad Tobago Prison Service. We've seen a lot, and we still have a lot more to show you. Um, and as dependency, the word dependency, we depend on the Trinidad Tobago Prison Service to hold and treat their clients and you know, giving them that opportunity if they so desire to return to society. Yeah. A different person. Um, and you offer several types of rehabilitation um, programs. Gentlemen, could you tell us what are the types of rehabilitation programs administered by the Trinidad and Tobago Prison Service? And we have some um, photos that we got to show. So, we, so gentlemen, over to you. Hi. It may to engage in the following areas of rehabilitation. Academic, from literacy, straight up, and I know the, some time ago, I don't, I don't know if it's continuing at the moment because of the COVID, where at the youth training center then, the youth training and rehabilitation center now, the, the residents there would have gone out to do tertiary education. Mm -hmm. So we have literacy, basic literacy, straight up. Then we have the vocational, where we look at syllabus skills learning from simple things like concrete pot making. We have the, the sports. Sports plays an ext extreme part. At Carrera, we, are, we would have used a lot of the avenue of sports to have persons understand the importance of winning gracefully, losing gracefully, teamwork, team building, even understanding self and managing self, managing anger, and sports play such a, a, a great role. We have the life skills program, and we also encourage maintaining family bonds. Theory, we try to look at data and theory, not only in this jurisdiction, but on the international landscape, where the family support system is one of the greatest strengths towards stopping persons from reoffending. And through the years, the use of CUPCAM and all the other organizations, we would have developed the family programs, the inviting of children. Now with the virtual visits, we have that opportunity where persons can actually speak with their, with their entire family online. And this has been one of the positive one of the opportunities taken from the COVID experience. 
we've had our religious instructions. Religious can, can I jump in here? Yes, you may, um, sir. Right. So, when, as you're on the family program and so on, I wanted to add here, um, God and Sinclair and listenership, the word socialization is, a, is one word, but it means a lot. And your, your, your ads spoke about children a lot and human trafficking and all that. Um, most of the times, our inmates, our clients, have learned, have been socialized in the wrong way. So, what they learned, the family value system had broken down, and they resort to survival, and undesirable peers would have influenced them negatively. So they were socialized inappropriately, and they learned things, they learned survival skills, and most of the time, the word criminogenic needs comes in here. So coming into the system, in the prison system, that's where rehabilitation comes in. And what Mr. Bruce was men mentioning there with the family system, we try to go back to the family system and do the proper socialization with the inmates. Now, socializing a child is much more easier than socializing a big, hard-grown man that have done all the negative things and end up in prison. So family value, family bonding, family support is critical. And for our, in our rehabilitation programs or initiatives or providing opportunities, we always try to bring in the family members. And sometimes it doesn't have to be a blood relationship. It could be a significant other who have a great influence in your lives. So I just wanted to add that. Over to you, Sharon. All right. Um, before we go now, gentlemen, we have some photos of the agricultural program. And we have to step on the gas because, you know, it's, you know time flies here very fast. So, gentlemen, um, we, we're going to show, first, we have watermelon. I mean, look at how, this is, how, I mean, look at watermelon we see in here. And I'm sure this is just a snapshot of what you all reap. Tell us about this. Agriculture plays the role not only in training that syllabus skills, but also the issue of the persons getting down their hands in the dirt, having to be able to touch and have an outcome, a successful outcome. As you can see, if you look at the guy's faces holding the watermelon, look, look, look at the guy in the middle, how, how, how he's holding that, that watermelon, the smile <laughs> on his face. Yes. It, it tells you something how they feel. So, the programs are not one dimensional. We also have hydroponics. We have pottery, pottery and craft and metal wood. Yeah, you could go we to the next slide. Um, yes, short this man. is at the Women Prison. And remember, folks, if you want to join us on Facebook or YouTube to see right. this, you can. Yes, our um, hydroponics area where we're doing the seedlings. The seedlings now would go out into the fields and we'll develop our agriculture. Okay. The aim going forward is to have a, a strong, positive agriculture department, not only where we do training, because we have from cattle, we have sheep, we have pigs, we have chickens, we have ducks, we even have eggs. But how, how do we develop those programs? We also, we also partner with external, with our external entities that will would grow because this is what they do as a, as a professional. It would be foolhardy of us to believe that we could do it all alone. The input of Trinidad and Tobago in our rehabilitative aspect, even with the donation of systems, donation of computers, all those things go forward to helping us develop and continue developing because it will also add to what we have. Right. And uh, um. And thank you very much, folks, for joining us. Now, they had, a, they had a debate competition, and we know that some of the, the, the best debaters in the country emanate from Trinidad and Tobago Prison Service. And this, they, there was one done at Woodford Square, I remember, that drew a large audience. And yes. um, here you have pictures of that now, of the debate at Woodford Square. How, how is the debate team, and how, any plans for the future with more debate? We, of course, before I start, I just say thanks to Ms. Debbie Jacob for all the work that she would have done 
in creating this entity. Like I said, Prison Canada do it alone. And we continue to partner with persons who have the skills, the capacity, and the heart to do this. This is something we intend to continue because it has value. Let's just look at the debate team. Before you reach there, your literacy has to improve. So there's an academic component. Right. Then going forward, there's a research component. Then there's a mm. self-development component where you build your self-esteem to get to that point where we go to the other component where you could speak in public. So these programs are not one-dimensional and they comprise so much and teach so much. So we cannot look at these things just as a debate team. But what did it mean to us? What does it mean to the institution? And what has the inmates, our clients, what have they gained from this? And I know um, if you look at the guy on top, he he is also one of our, our persons at Rise, Rise Maximum Radio. Yes. And that encouraged that speaking and that confidence. So the debate competition, it is hope that we could do something virtually We've had several items on our agenda for 2022 to do virtually our Calypso, our art show, the debate. Speaking another, of art, we have a photo of the art. Um, short man, you can go to that. Of the chess competition. So, how do we do all these things now during COVID? We have to look at those new opportunities that, that were created by the pandemic how do we bring forward some of the same things in a new way and we're looking at the art now and um i know from time to time the prison service would have at an art display at different locations um namely non circular mall to start with i know i've seen it there before and if if you have art that requires displaying you should know how beautiful and well done this art is and people always pass through the mall and they they, they they draw a large 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 crowd everybody would go there just to see the art of these men and and you know and it and it's wonderful we have a, uh, an example of it right now showing here and um and that's uh, just the tip of the iceberg just the tip of the iceberg we know yes these guys continue to work they they have grown as a strong team they have also trained other persons within within the field. Um, before again, Sister Kina Rain Singh and Raj Yoga, mm -hmm. they have they have assisted us greatly in this venture. And, and my last conversation with Sister Narain Singh, Sister K, she's willing to lend her expertise to to guide and assist us going forward. Once again, we cannot do this alone. Right. Well, we fool how you ever see one try. This and of program course, is just an example of that. And the Calypso competition, we have, um, Kingston, you could go to that now, please. The Calypso competition that is held annually. I and think these are from Carrera. This, this, what, what, what location, which location are we looking at here, Mr. Bruce? Mr. Ramuta, if you speak well, I, I heard Carrera, and um, it is Carrera, as long as you see Mr. Philip there, that's Carrera. Right. But um, I seem to see there's a bias for Carrera, um, Mr. Simpson. <laughs> I, I, I'm certain that. Um, I'll we, have to we speak have to... We programs through all, out, all our institutions. Right. Last yes. year, we, we did it virtually. And this okay. year, God's willing, we also intend to do it virtually again. All right. So, Lovely. Right. Lovely. I, I, As I always, add... Mr. Amuta? It's not one-dimensional. Yeah, I, I, I want to add here that those clients who engage in the artwork and craft and so on have accepted the fact that I need to change. I was socialized inappropriately and I'm willing to accept change and change myself. So you get success in these programs, you get your talent being shown, but if you remain in denial, the programs will not work for you as best as it should. Lovely. And we have pictures of them in Woodford Square. 
and 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 I mean they really they, these the clients really look forward to these occasions. I can tell because they go the distance in preparing and and presenting. Yeah, prop. Yes. It, it, it is it is a wonderful release and again i stress it is not one dimensional the look at if you look at the costume come out of women's prison the person who have designed that I, I won't call her name now but stacy has worked a lot and she's she's shown the, the person even the measuring the cutting it may seem simple but they all have value and even the foreigners, I remember the foreigners being part of it and trying to understand the, the carnival and understand the dancing. But it has its value and we continue and we will not lose this opportunity. We will do this virtually. If you're just joining us, folks, you're listening to Annie Penancy and we are speaking with Mr. Dubosad Ramuta and Mr. Showin Bruce. They are both acting deputy commissioners of prisons and they are taking us through various aspects of the Trinidad and Tobago Prison Service and what they do in terms of rehabilitation and all of that. And, and so far, you can join us on Facebook or YouTube, Annie Penancy. If you want to join in, listeners, we will try our best to describe what we're seeing and what we are showing to you. Now, before we go to the next question, gentlemen. The training, we, 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 if we talk in rehabilitation, right, um, then we need to have personnel who think like that as well. So let, let's go back to training of recruits. Is it geared towards that um, or, or the recruits are just see their positions of being, you know, in authority or more important than, you know, to have a relationship with the inmates? Um, right. Do you think that 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 you know um, the, the 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 treatment that um, by some officers towards it might be undermining your very philosophy that you're trying to bring on stream before before um, so the question would be what are some of the, the the strides that have been made in the rehabilitation offered in prison because it, they go hand in hand. All right. Let me let me do an introduction to that, and Mr. Bruce will, will take over from there with the official part. Right. Um. We have, when clients and inmates come to us in the prison, we consider them as persons who are broken, broken men and women. The staff that has the mandate or the responsibility to assist inmates in providing the opportunities for change cannot be broken themselves. So our training for staff has to be that while we heal ourselves, to heal others, we have to keep tailor-made programs for the staff as well in helping these inmates understand who they are, where they came from, and how they can do things differently. So yes, training in the social sciences, training in the way we think, training along the lines of rehabilitation is necessary for the staff, and Mr. Bruce will expand. Mr. Bruce? Thanks very much, sir. As Mr. Ramta would have alluded, times have changed. The whole philosophy of locking up and throwing the key no longer holds and it hasn't held for, for over a century. Persons in prisons, the inmates, they are somebody brother, somebody sister, somebody father, and the officers, as Mr. Ramta would have said, Officers are trained, and that understanding. Trinidad and Tobago is such a small community. Everybody could sit right here, right now, and say they know at least one person in prison. And somebody could sit right now and say that. And it tells you how small the society is, and that understanding that we all, we all link together, and we must play a part. So. The legacy of our officer undermining this process. We have system in place to weed them out, not only to weed them out, but also to do that developmental training. And these officers are in the minority. Right, because they know when, you, when you're talking change, uh, um, a client could go to our program, but when he goes back to his or her division or section, the, the, the officers there. Um, apply that inhumane treatment. You're kind of, you know, spinning top in mud, really. You know, it's kicking over the milk 
when um that you just fill the pail in you know what i'm saying so i'm glad to hear you say that you you making attempts to fix that that, that um i try to be careful because the interpretation of something comes with the person who's on the spot i tell inmates as new committers this is a group institution, a residential care institution. And by definition, according to government, that, that is what this institution is. That is what it is. We move as a group. We cannot, because of the security media, an officer cannot give you what you want and would not. An inmate may see, for example, he wants to go outside. But you cannot go outside. You, you, you want to, to do this. You cannot do it now. Sometimes they interpret that as nobody cares for them. People may say how it's done, but reality, we provide opportunities and officers continue to strive in a professional manner to ensure that the rules and regulation of the institution and our mandate of rehabilitation is carried out. So, in, in the main, we have strong officers, officers who are willing, and of course, go the distance to ensure that the persons who live here do not return. On that point, um, Mr. Bruce and Mr. Ramata, someone raised a, a point on Facebook that I want to expand on a little bit, is, and that is in terms of what system is in place for prisoners to earn money so that upon release they will have something to start with is this such a system in place and and how how are the wages or earnings determined now this is a message on facebook yeah. a question or something yeah um prison service <clears throat> is evolving in this in this aspect if we go by the 1838 Act, there's a formula of how much money an inmate can get, which is, mm. is foolish. My word foolish, what we give. However, when the laws are being drafted at that point in time, it was not intended that the person could supposed to survive on that money, but that was money to travel home that particular day, have a meal for yourself on that particular day. And that's it. We are evolving in that. Now, folks, those of you who are with us this morning, we want to thank you. Thank you very much for the interest in our yeah, Trinidad and Tobago right. Prison Service. Because, you see, when, when there's a national discussion, everybody have different things to say and not understanding they are, you know, there are different ins and outs with this institution. And they are, they are, sometimes they are pushed back from society when any government attempts to make changes to, to better for the betterment of everyone because all I say once you better the institution you will not only better it for the uh, for the inmates but you do so for the officers as well who are working in that environment and and also goes, the society guys. and also the always, society always remember everything you should to bigger prison service does is about public safety and creating a safer and a better society we right. had our own programs into different areas to let people know to bring it home to them this is what we do this is what comes out accept the persons as they come back be a forgiven society be a society willing to assist each other and as long as that is done the likelihood of the society getting better is, is increased well, I know that that culture of forgiveness, um, we need to work on that. We need we have a lot of work to do on that aspect. Um, that's, that's really scary for us. It is, it is. But on that note, um, what is the sort of developments and, and work that is going on with the juveniles especially? Because as, as a young person entering a, a prison environment, it will be challenging. So how, how, how are you working on um, providing the opportunities to change the lives of young people in the system? Providing the opportunities to, to change. 
it's first started off on our assessment. Everything we do does not happen in a vacuum or, he or hairy fairy, especially at the youth training, new training facility. We have a development of a care plan to identify the criminogenic needs specific to each juvenile. Programs are then created to address those needs and administer during the offender's time at the center. Of course, the willingness of the person served to be part of it. And as they develop, we thought that YTC has the option of the individual going out of the system to work and also attending school external to the system. Okay. So we are fortunate, we are fortunate for that. Right. We have, if we realize based on the criminal genetic needs and the capacity that that's possible, and I'd like to just mention to those partners, I don't know if I could call the partners on here, but I, 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 I won't, but I'll just say chicken and sweeties, they have been the persons who would have helped us a lot with with having job placement for the for some of the boys and when they leave some of the boys continue working with them mm. and i remember one had been had moved up the ladder to be a supervisor there so it shows that just that one example tells us that the community involvement in, in all rehabilitative aspects is important to, for, to our success we are doing it but we need persons to be part of the process. Of course. And I know, as you, you've mentioned throughout, that, you know, you get, the prison does get a lot of support from organizations, NGOs, CBOs, faith-based organizations. Yeah, and we want to yeah. show some evidence of that. Um, uh, Shortman um, could start with N, which is... Well, these are some of the contributions or donations that would would have been made by by state and other agencies yes, to the prison. Um, so we you have know, have donated also, Richard and Mission. Mm -hmm. um, it will be, it will, it will be, I'll be foolish to try to call all the persons who would have donated. Yeah. Um, we would have gotten PPEs to bolster what, what we would have purchased, um, sanitizers, systems, all these things, laptops for chess, all these things are important for us and important in development. Yes. But bearing in mind, there's always a need. And that need, I, I see Brother MTS there, part of Cupcam, and, and in the and in various areas, I, that was at women's prison. I see Mr. Ramota there in the picture, women's prison, Brother Barker, and Sister Kelly, they all have been there with us. And the faith base, a lot of people come in. Why, why do we have, we have a lot of religious programs, but religion has an important aspect in the development of anybody, bio, psycho, social, and also spiritual part of the person. But the spirituality does not happen in a vacuum, and would not happen in a vacuum, but happens aligned to our criminal genetic needs. Yep. All right. Well, let's move straight on then to the next the next question in terms of the the challenges that you face in delivering these kinds Just of. Now, before we go before to that, we go to um, yes, I'm seeing um you, you had an extension the extension of the you know, we've the seen canteen. A photo. Yes, we've seen a photo here. <laughs> we all did an upgrade of the canteen and um the 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 the, the yes, stocking of it. I mean, it looks it looks good. Like a little it, it is, as you can see also the commissioner is there opening that and it is really good that the commissioners build on each other and the commissary where the person can now come and shop their family would put would um put the money in the commissary as is with jurisdiction across the world and the inmates are able to shop what we are endeavoring going forward is that we limit the amount of stuff the person can have in their cells. Not the amount of stuff that they could buy, but the amount of stuff that they can have in their cells. Because, of course, we look at the issues of, of um, whatever rodents, whatever, whatever can happen 
and also the spacing the private spacing everybody has a personal space and we and even through that we teach persons how to appreciate other person's personal space so the commissary is there with us and the shopping they could go and shop accordingly all right if you're just joining us folks you're listening to Annie Penance as usual and we are just um, at 11.20 here, we are speaking with Mr. Bruce and Ramuta from the Trinidad and Tobago Prison Service. And Mr. Ramuta, you're still there, right? Yes, yes, I'm right. here. So, um, so, gentlemen, tell us what uh, opportunity. Now, someone, and, and that, that is a good um, point Marsha made about we have to do program now for society to see how we can reach society and to try to get them to see people coming out of prison as... You know, our people, the, the nationals of Trinidad and Tobago, yes, they have fallen short, but if people want to reintegrate, and Marsha, this is what we continue to do here on this radio program by trying to do just that, you know, to try, try. We, we may not succeed with everyone, but we're going to keep trying. This is why I decided to start the independency. This is why I made that phone call from Brooklyn to Natasha 20 years ago to tell her i coming home because people didn't understand i didn't understand why i let a crack rock destroy a whole career and sent me adrift but i knew i was not a bad person so i wanted people to know that after doing studies on it and showing we know how many workshops we have been to look at the scientific part of substance abuse this is why we decided to do this program so we will do our part as much as we could but gentlemen what are the opportunities um are there now oh let, let's look at the challenges Just, yeah right COVID 19 for us the challenges are just a creation of new opportunities for us we have restructured reformatted adapted to new and innovative strategies to continue our mandate because our mandate must continue you just talk about that 20 years ago and you haven't given up and you've kept you've kept on trying and likewise the prison service will keep on trying we our mandate is to provide rehabilitative opportunity to all those persons in our space and we'll continue doing that we've looked at the, at the virtual programming methodology we've also had the hybrid where we started our virtual person coming we like to thank YTEP at least for, for some of, of the intervention. We also started with the training of our staff. I know Ms. Aramuta was instrumental in the training of our staff. The retraining of our staff so we could um they could be part of those rehabilitative issues. Right. Some uh, of Mr. the facilitators. Can, can yes, I come in here? Yeah, Ms. Aramuta, go ahead. Right. I'm um, getting some signals here so i want to make a comment before it gets weak right um one of the tools one of the mechanisms to provide opportunities for change both for staff and inmates is our radio station and god you can come in here and give the history on it at your timing <laughs> but presently we have a radio station in the prison service staffed by both officers and inmates however because of the high covid cases we had recently don't know we had to curtail the inmate staff in at the radio station very soon but I'll give you we have inmates officers doing research physical research online research to the inmates so we benefit from the benefit of advertising when you repeat something over and over it gets stick in your head as well as the jingles and colleges and so on when we have positive programming, we attempt to reach this Matt Sinclair does in his radio station. I, I depend on him to reach there, but we close, Matt, we close. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, we, we, an inmate hearing another inmate speaking about change does a lot for him than a, than a member of staff. An inmate can feel, empathize, and identify with the pain, the struggles of where he came from and where he has reached. And through the radio station, it's a medium then we can dispense and disseminate the inmates positive thinking. A challenge for us at the station, we need to have equipment to 
police stations, and we have inmates cooperate with us in focusing on the program and so on. So, Gautam, uh, uh, you, you would speak on the rest of the original irritation at your own timing. Yeah, well, well, yes, and I, I'm just thinking back to, to when we launched Rise Maximum Radio in 2012. So this year will be 10 years of Rise Maximum Radio um, in yeah. September. Well, yeah. Yeah, boy. And, um, you know, we... You did a good job. You <laughs> did a good job. Um, I know the Rise Maximum Radio is really, is really a passion for you all. And you all have so much plans development of, of, of that entity that part of our rehabilitative um and we should have to be good prison services who will willing to partner with you all that we probably will to partner with you all to, to help develop it we we have used it to cap not to its capacity we've we've had our challenges and we continue to grow and we've received the assistance i know from you personally guys personally out of your pocket and and we thank you i know mr spring who is probably listening at, at the moment that's your yes. shake your head because you all know his passion for this oh yeah oh yeah you know oh, what? Mm. we are Trust part me. of the international forum of, of, of christian radios correct yeah spring and, spring and that is something you all help develop and, and we continue to to utilize that so yes so team right maximum radio where where inmates work alongside officers it, that's, it that's, tells what can happen with any institution and the whole mindset and that growth. You know, um, you know, gentlemen, this prison radio could be so powerful. We see right in Jamaica where artists record and record become big hits when they release. There was a there was a young man because we belong to Prison Radio International, and there was a young man in in, in the U.S who actually was doing a long stretch, nearly 30-something years. Mm -hmm. And the governor in that state was listening to the radio station and give this young man a pardon. He, he I mean, he was so good. He was so well done on the radio. He, he, he was so well placed that the, commission, the governor just listened and continued to listen. Next thing you know, Mr. Man got a pardon. And now he is running he's a program. Free man now. Yes, and, and he's helping to develop program yes. for the same radio station. So it can be used in so many different ways. But we have to thank Mr. Roger, Gordon Husbands. These were the two people who we approached first, and I will never forget these gentlemen because they opened the door for us to start the relationship with the Trinidad and Tobago Prison Service. And then and the door is still open, that the door is still I, open. Thankful to hear that, you know, and um, we, we, we must recognize Mr. Martinez, Martin Martinez. And then he 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 oversaw the, the 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 production and the installment and everything and the launch. And we, under the watchful eye of the British High Commission at the time, Arthur Snell. Yeah. And then and that no, sorry, go and, ahead. No, and then no, I'm just recognizing the people yeah. who I know. You know, along with Mr. Bruce and Mr. Ramota, because I know Mr. Ramota did his thing there as well. But Mr. Martinez, then Mr. Stewart, Mr. Wilson, and now Mr. Pulchan is in the chair. And we want to thank you all very much for at least keeping this going, because, you know, many people tried and had different ideas. But this morning is about the positive, and we want to keep the positive vibe alive with it. And thank you very much for keeping it going, Mr. Bruce. And all of you who are responsible, because it's a, an important tool. But Mr. Ramota, has, I like you. He has his passion for the radio. Mr. Spring, I like to mention also Krabby. You know your friend Krabby and Salt and Pepper. That <laughs> team, they have been doing good. Um, I like to mention also Andrew Douglas. Yes. Yeah, Andrew Douglas has been using that medium. Not only to develop himself, but also to reach out to the the new committed inmates and also to the other inmates, and it it, it has that opportunity for for, for, for that peer council, for that peer involvement. And Andrew Douglas has been using it along with the other inmates who work side by side with the officers. Not only to develop self, but develop the radio and other inmates. Um, Potapo, I, I, I wouldn't want to answer that on you. All right, let me, let me just say that. All right, partner. Um, 
I, and to I, those of you, I, I stand, that's yours. Pardon? I said, I bow to you, sir. And... <laughs> We'll talk, about that, we'll talk about that in camera, sir. Yes, yes. No, I hear you. No, so I was responding to somebody on, um, on Facebook here with a question. And as I say, we're just dealing with positives this morning. So let's stick with that, all right? So um, so, so now we, we, we just maybe want to give the, the listeners a chance to, those of you who are not on Facebook and YouTube, to give a chance to call in if they have any questions. Yeah, and we'll share they, some um, of the, the comments from we'll share from some of the Facebook. comments. Well, yeah. Ms. Alexander is dealing with some of the comments on mm -hmm. Facebook. And, we'll still um, read them out for you to hear. Right. And, and of course, you all have access to the Facebook and YouTube page afterwards. You can go back and answer any question that the, um, that's been posed by people on who's online this morning. Folks, we're going to take a quick break. And when we return, we'll take your calls and wrap up with Mr. Bruce and Mr. Pulchan. We'll be back. And Mr. I come in and don't give me no attitude there. Eh? You have shit on them manners, boy. Hmm. I wish I had your touch, boy. You have to groom them. First, you have to target them. Scope them out. <laughs> See if they have low self-esteem. Family problems, you know? Then you move in and gain the trust. I like your glasses. After that, you feel a need. Some of them like nice things like fancy phones, hairdos, clothes, food. It have ones who only looking for somebody to care and listen to the problems. So you feel me? What important do? You have to isolate them from the people. Let them believe it's all about you Forget and them. them. I care about you. Then you get through. Nice, nice. Look one right here. Try thing now. A message from the Counter Trafficking Unit of the Ministry of National Security. Hi, Bill. Hey, hey. Hi, how are you? Good I'm morning. Good. You busy? Not for you, not for you, I could assist. Okay, That's we it. have a job for you. Job? Well, what kind of job is it? Morning, the boss. If I have a small work for you, I have 5,000. What we want you to do? Pick up some gears, drop them and remember the boss for you. You're making a quick 5,000 gears. Boss, where, where's this about? Listen to me now. It's all a small one. You reach in Toko, pick up some girls, drop them a Rima. 5,000. That song is like human trafficking. Are you trying to set me up or what? Partner, you know the penalty for human trafficking? Look, I gone or no? Excuse me, please. Do you know that human trafficking is considered a serious crime in Trinidad and Tobago and is punishable by law under the Trafficking in Persons Act, Chapter 1210 or the TIPS Act? The penalties for recruiting, receiving, transporting, or housing a victim of human trafficking are a minimum of 15 years for trafficking adults and a fine of $500,000, a minimum of 20 years for trafficking children and a fine of $1 million, a fine of $350,000 and imprisonment for 12 years for transporting a person within or across TT borders for the purpose of exploiting that person for prostitution a fine of $400,000 and imprisonment for 15 years for persons who receive a financial or other benefits from TIPS, a fine of $500,000 and imprisonment for 20 years for any person who receives a financial or other benefits from trafficking children, an additional 15 years imprisonment for any trafficker who uses or threatens to use a dangerous weapon on a victim or where the victim suffers serious bodily harm or the victim contracts a life-threatening illness or is sexually assaulted. Or, if the trafficker abuses his power as someone entrusted with the care or supervision of a child victim. Imprisonment for 25 years for any member of the Defense or Protective Services or any official or public officer having the powers of arrest who commits an offense. Court can order for future of convicted traffickers' property. A company can be fined $5 million for engaging in tips. We are the counter-trafficking unit of the Ministry of National Security, Trinidad and Tobago, safeguarding human life. Eye on Dependency with Garth and Natasha. Reality Radio, at its best, where every life is a biography. Sundays 
at 10 a.m. and exclusively on i95.5 FM. And streamed live on the Eye on Dependency Facebook page and YouTube channel. Thank you for staying with us. This is I on Dependency, and you are tuned in live on I95.5 FM, you as well as questions. Facebook and YouTube. You can call us now at 622-3937 if you have any questions or comments to the gentleman speaking with us this morning. Yes. And I want to say thank you, Stephen Bridgewater, for your well put together and, you know, the message you left for us here. We thank you very yes. much. You, you know, it's, it's, I mean, you really took your time and did some serious artwork here, but, but Stephen, thank you. All the same, um, the, yes. the, the extra touch it's of the hair. Appreciated. Yes, yeah, much appreciated. Um, Sorry. And gentlemen, um, I wanted to. <laughs> so the lines are open. They call us at six two two three nine three seven. Yeah, before we um, before we go to that, I just wanted to read this comment um, on Facebook from Independent Senator Hazel Thompson. Ah, he, um, good morning, ma'am. She she says I was happy to hear that. Tell Mr. Ramata state that programs were not created in a vacuum, and about the training that officers and inmates receive. Can he say if officers have received training in child rights? I ask this question because I recall that with regard to the programs where parents were given the opportunity to have their children come to the prison and be able to read stories to their children, uh, there was a stipulation that this would be stopped if a particular parent did not behave well or disobey the rules. This rule does not take into consideration that the visit was or was or the benefit of the was for the benefit of the child and the impact on the child would be very negative if the visits were curtailed. Mr. Ramata, I don't know if you want to address that comment. Uh, Shivan? <laughs> sure, sure, hi. Right. Um, at for the Spain prison, we would have had the opportunities where we had the library. Um, that was the You just went mute there, sir. I don't know what happened. He just got frozen. Oh, gosh. Yes. Uh, uh, all right, until he comes back on. At oh. Porter's Spring Prison, that was a pilot project that was embarked upon. And it went well. Mm. It went well. As regards to if children rights uh, were taught to officers, I knew there was a particular level of training at YPRC. When the Children Authority came on board and had, we had to restructure our whole administrative format, there were many officers who were trained there in children's rights. But what happened at Port of was a pilot library project where children were allowed to, to, to come to the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the prison in a yeah. library area and allow that facility. It went well, and I am sure it's something we can continue. COVID, of course, um, put a damp on all that we do. Yeah. All right, we have a call, 622-397. Good morning. Happy New Year. Mr. Happy New Year, Year ma'am. How are you going? <laughs> I know it's kind of late for Happy New Year, but it's the first time no, we're no, here. No, no, no. So. Don't worry. <laughs> it okay. is still new. <laughs> so we have Mr. Bruce. You have a question for Mr. Bruce or Ramuta? No, I'm really just listening. And, um, you know, and I said, let me touch base and thing to know that I am in touch with what's happening. So, All right. All right. I mean, you know, what I heard so far is, you know, what he said, things, the positive things, right? And I know that um, things will continue, not with science. He said, you're not with the pandemic, you know, they're still doing, you know, quite a bit. So you all keep up the good work. So. All, right. All right. Good day, everyone. Take good care. Day. Thank right. you very much. 622-3937. We have, and, and also Mr. Ramuta and Mr. Bruce tried their best. I hope Ms. Um, Senator, the independent senator, would have been satisfied with that answer. Um, I don't know if you wanted to add anything, Mr. Bruce, to that response. Oh, Hello, good morning. Oh, we have another call. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Yes, morning. ma'am. Um, I want to find out something. 
there may be persons in prison who cannot afford to buy or don't have anyone to supply them the basic necessities. Mm -hmm. Like soap and whatever. They may not have a family member or anybody who can do that. Yeah. I would like to know how somebody on the outside can get that to the prison authorities so that they can furnish these people without their basic supplies. Good question. Good question. Good Thank question you very much for asking. Because there are people in the system like that. Mr. Bruce Ramuta, you want to take a shot of that? The lady was, uh, you heard the question, by the way? It was a bit muffled. She was asking how can persons on the outside provide um, it, food stuff or, or items or money for persons who do not have relatives on the outside right, to provide those visits things. And, you know, how, how do, who could we help them? And if there's a there's provisions... Um, for non-relatives to, to provide yes, that kind of support. for to provide that support for people who... Right, yes. Well, the the bank account, well, I can't recall it off my head right now. We will we'll give it to you guys. You'll pick up your page mm-hmm. where right. they can go to the bank, Republic Bank, donate monies to the account, and it, it would register to our department. It's allowed physically to come to the account and choose what it likes to that amount. Money is in the account. So, yes, you can get those amenities. The physical stuff, clothing and all that, COVID again, if we want to accept clothing as we did before, we have to quarantine clothing before we can get it. So, we so it's become a needs base or including as well as the so it isn't that there's an alternative. Yeah, you you're still yeah. going in an old Miss Aramuta. No, no, stay there for a while. We we got the while. fact that um there's an RBL account that people can contribute to. Um, and we will be provided with it so we can put it up on our page. We hear that. Yes. And, um, um, Ms. Alexander probably could do it, do it um, with, the before the program time. ends. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, yes, we do facilitate those. Um, and there's the virtual visit that they can actually see and speak to members of their family. Mm. And if there is a need, we can even extend the visit time that, it, that is allowed. 622-3937. Sorry about that. Um, Please we, try again. And and we coming close to is what eleven forty two now and we are speaking with Mr. Bruce and Rambuta. Hello, good morning. Hello, good day, God, Natasha, Mr. Rambuta, and the other guest. Morning. Good morning, um, sir. I'm not too sure if you guys covered the topic already, but is there a program in place where persons who were sex successfully rehabilitated, where you bring them back into the system to more or less motivate those who are inside? Thanks. Okay. Yes, um, is yes. there is there uh, and someone wanted to find too about work release program or is it is it the skills that some people are acquiring there if it you all help them to, to seek jobs outside? But this particular caller is asking whether persons who have been released and are, and are successful are they brought back to the prison to to help motivate or inspire the Others. current residents? Yeah. Yes, and if I were to call a name, um, Wayne Chance yes. was one such person. Um, through the radio station, we have brought back ex-inmates to do motivational talks and so on to the inmates. Okay. And normally, these ex-inmates would join a faith-based organization. Hmm. And they would come in with the faith-based organization. And yes, would and, and give testimonies on, on, on how to survive outside here. Well, our, our NGO too, we have done a lot of work in the prison as well. You know, I have yes. done a lot of work at all, nearly every station. Every station. You know, so, yes, um, I, I know that that door was opened some years ago and, of course, started by Wayne. And, of course, the relationship that the prison has with various NGOs and FBOs, CBOs, um, there are always opportunities for persons like Wayne, like Garth, and others to to go back and try to, to help the brothers and sisters inside. Perhaps the person who asks the question may want to offer his services. 
Right, you can probably um, invite him and, and pass the contact on to us. I'm sure. Okay, we'll and, do. Yeah, we'll I'm do. sure. Mr. Bruce, you wanted to jump in? I think your mic is muted, but you can. Your mic is muted, Mr. Bruce. Yeah, you have to unmute your mic. No, still not. Um, All right, yes, we have you now. You have me now? Yep. Oh, sorry about that. I just, I just like to, I just like to just put in something with, with that we have the development of the release champions, and that will be something we'll be rolling out this year. I know mm -hmm. God was at the launch of the release champions, yeah. where the persons who have been successful. With, with negotiating life external to the institution, they they become something like um in drug we have the sponsor. They go I I did the sponsor concept where when the inmate comes out they have someone who they can lean on. We've also had persons who who were in prison who would come back in through the, the different CBOs, FBOs, and also through other organizations to assist with the rehabilitation efforts. So yes, in short, yes, the persons come back into the institution to assist. Right. 6223937. You can call again if you have any questions or comments for the gentleman we're speaking with. And I want to take this opportunity, gentlemen, to speak to the officers now who... To speak to the officers now. I, I would say tend to for whatever reason, make the wrong decisions. Uh, first of all, I want you to think carefully of where you are and how many hundreds of people would like to be where you are right now. That's the first thing. And as further as you go into your career, I want you to listen to me carefully, you know. Because living the life of a discharged, honor, a dishonorably discharged Service personnel is not an easy thing. And I want you all to listen to this and take this foolish advice. Unless you prepare, you prepare to become a professional beggar after getting discharged, a dishonorable discharge, from whatever arm of the protective service, if you find that it's fashionable, then go ahead, make the wrong decisions. But I can tell you, I can paint the future for you. It is not going to be easy. Because when you, and especially if you're, you're, you're married personnel, and you lose that career, your wife now will have to carry the load for everybody. And if you want to hold on to your marriage, you'll now have to become a, if you don't get a job, and remember, every job you apply for now, they always want to know where you work last and why did you leave. That follows you for the rest of your life, wherever you go. And if we talk in rehabilitation, and you have to make sure and stay in step and stay in line too as well. Because we, to this day, we cannot understand why prisoners want cigarettes and want other items of abuse. But I want to show something to you all, Mr. Bruce, Mr. Ramuta. There are different shifts that man the prison, right? From, you know, different hours at a time. Any officer who smokes cigarettes, a simple thing as cigarettes, I want you to think of this. When you go to work, you could do an entire shift without smoking a cigarette. Especially if you're a coffee drinker, and I so said we have two addictions we deal with here now caffeine and nicotine. Can you, the officer who smokes cigarettes, you will open five gates if you have to, just to go in a designated area to take a smoke and open them five gates to go back to your post? Why do you think that is? Well, then you should understand why the prisoner need that nicotine too. Because they take them off the streets 
and they don't have access to it, so they'll be craving too as well. So this is why I'm saying these things suppose and now you will understand why this addiction and this rehabilitation is necessary, including the reopening of a drug rehab facility in the prison. How many of you as officers would have failed, even in recruit training? You couldn't complete a, a, a long distance run. You, you, up to this day, you can't do an about turn without wobbling. And how many of you, how many of you from recruit training, you couldn't even do the required amount of push up, but you still get a bligh, right? And you still understand. Well, then you should understand how a prisoner could come out here sometimes, a client could, and, be a, and, and fail and have to come back into the institution. So, so it, 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 it works both ways. We are not perfect people. And most of you drink too. When you have functions, some of you drink the other carrier to your car or you sleep it off before you go home. It's the same thing. How many of you? So then you need to understand recidivism too as well. Because you can't do an entire shift without smoking a cigarette. Why? Because you're addicted to that nicotine. So we have to start, everybody must start thinking together, how can we change this system? Prisons around the world have tried to stop trafficking. They really tried. And Mr. Bruce and Ms. Ramata will tell you who've been on courses outside and met other prison officials will tell you that. Trafficking is a, is a embedded, you know, um, bugbear for most prisons around the world. It's a worldwide phenomenon. It's a worldwide phenomenon. It's a deprived environment, so obviously right. people will try to. So, Not gentlemen. Yeah. But persons who want to be here and persons who are custom doing what they want and breaking the law. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's that situation, that reality that you're working Gentlemen, at some prisons that we've been to, at some point, now cigarettes are not illegal in the country. So, and, and some prisons around the world understand that addiction to nicotine too, and they allow smoking in the prison. They have designated areas, they have lighter ports. They don't give them matches and lighters, but they have lighter ports that they have. And cigarettes could go, actually go in a can canteen, uh, in this could actually go in a canteen and buy the cigarettes. So at some point, which is the, 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 the lowest form of addiction and the lowest scale, we have to maybe reach to that at some point where inmates can have access to the cigarettes and understanding that too is an addiction. That rehab facility in the prison, I'm hoping that we'll reach to that one day too as well. You know, we, we have a long way to go, but the strides you're making, we want to congratulate you on it and... You know, hope for the best for the future. Six two two three nine three seven. Sorry for taking so long, but I had to say that, especially to the officers. I know it's your passion, that I know that's your passion. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Um, God, I wanted to, um, I was listening very avid um to the um this morning's discussions. I wanted to bring up the point that um I don't know if anybody listened to the Parliament the other day. With Spencer's bill, yes. he brought up the issue that he felt there should be a rehabilitation clause. Yes. The reason being, he well knows that they, you can't force anybody into rehabilitation, no matter how much avenues you try. So they wanted to make it more compulsory. So what is the view the deputy commissioners there feel of such a clause being put into place that might help them mandate it to the, to the client? Um, question for Mr. Bruce or Ramuta, you want to take that question? Uh, yes, good morning. I recognize the voice. Um, removing someone from denial is a key. So the, the offender, once he comes to term with his criminogenic need, and if it is a, a, a sex offender, there is hope for him in therapy and so on. So any prison, in the prison, Was we losing again, sir? Uh, uh, 
Just just repeat that sentence, that last sentence. No, I said denial is a key factor. Yeah. If someone is in denial, they will refuse any sort of a program where it will be assumed that they are guilty. So a key to any rehabilitative program as you got the sex offenses is to get that person. Well, we are assuming that they are guilty, right? It's to accept their, their weakness, to accept their, 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 what is their criminogenic needs, or in some doctors will tell you, it's an illness, right? It's an illness that has to be treated. That's why some jurisdictions, they put persons on a, a sex offender list for life. Right. So we, need, we need to look at that, um, that, that crime in a whole different context by itself. But to answer the caller's um, question as regards to what the, the Senator said in mandatory programs, it, it, it can, it, I don't think a mandatory would work, but there's a lot of groundwork has to be done to get the person out of denial. And then, well, that's, it's all uphill climb after that. I think also what the Senator may have been alluding to was our um, heavy reliance on punitive measures as means of uh, punishment. And I think he was looking at alternatives to incarceration that would involve um, either custodial, community custodial sentences, those kinds of things, where people will be in a different kind of environment and, and perhaps will be able to receive the kind of psychological um, assistance that they need. Well, what is healthy dialogue is taking place, and yes, we can always speak on people's opinion and move forward with something positive. Gentlemen, we have come to the end of the road this morning with our program, and Mr. Booth, closing remarks? Any closing remarks from you? Yeah, I, I could say in a closing remark is that employment after prison is not the answer. It is the end result. The answer is having the right mindset. If you don't have the right mindset and you gain employment, you're going to falter. Having a right mindset is the key to success, not employment. Mm. Well said. Mr. Bruce? Right. Yes. I, I would like to agree that the mindset is important. Um, there is always a continuum of needs and continuum of outcomes. The, the mandatory Programming has its place and it's a continuum. It's another weapon in the arsenal for us going forward with rehabilitation. As we know with substance abuse, not everything works for everybody, but something works for somebody. And it is something that the prison service, by providing opportunities, know that somewhere in, in, the, in the continuum, somebody would fall in line and understand and reach to that place of understanding where there's a need to change. I thank you very much on behalf of the Commissioner of Prison, the Executive, for this opportunity to, to see what's happening in prison and as we go forward and for being a, a partner in our rehabilitation effort. Thank you very much, Gad and Natasha, and thank you for your today. You're welcome, Mr. Yeah, Bruce welcome. and Mr. Ramutan. We wish you yes. all, all the best going forward in your career, gentlemen. You yes, be good. You. Take Same care. Here. Be safe. Thank you very much. And right. to the officers again out there. Again, I ask you to think, think hard. If you want to hold on to your family, then hold on to your career. Make the right decisions. Because you don't want to be out here trying to justify your existence because you had a chance, you had an opportunity to find out from the men who doing it, who did it. Mr. Bruce, Mr. Ramota, look where they reach. Find out from them then if you're not sure. Anytime you're in doubt because they made it this far and they are good examples of uh, officers who can hold on to their career and do the right things trust me you don't want to get that discharge all right so folks god bless you all take good care be safe tasha thank you gary thank you hinkson thank you good and afternoon we have major news next at 12 noon with Mr. Sterling Henderson. Remember, folks, you can go back to our Facebook page and answer the questions or to the prison if you have any comments for them. Take care. Talk to you again. See you again next Sunday, God's willing, on our dependency. Have a good week. Bye-bye.